Having spent 15 years of my life working in private equity investment, seven years studying psychology, and three years studying accounting, I have a unique perspective on business. I've seen firsthand the habits that keep people in the rat race tied to a job they don't love. But if you could recognize these habits and change your mindset, it could totally change your life. So in this video, I'll walk you through what these habits are and how you can avoid them. Number one is a reluctance to change. This is one of the biggest mistakes people make. They join a company in, say, the marketing department at age 22 straight out of university, and 30 years later, they're still in marketing. It's what they know, it's the box that their employers have kept them in. Perhaps you have more skills than just marketing, maybe you're good with numbers and strategic thinking. Your talents are probably being wasted in marketing. But very few people apply for a job role in a different department, even within the same company. It's become a habit just to accept this as the way it is because it's comfortable. You know you're getting paid X amount on X day, no matter what. But this reluctance to change will keep you in a cycle. Whereas finding a new job at a new company could actually be the best decision you could make when it comes to getting out of the rat race. It's okay to leave and to go to a direct competitor. You may think that moving and starting from scratch is a pain in the ass, and look, it is, I've done it. But if you end up getting paid 30% more, you can then invest that money to give you another source of income, so it may well be worth it. Number two is a love of debt and consumption. Rich people tend to buy assets which generate income, whereas the rest of us tend to be consumers fueled by debt which eats up your income. The two biggest purchases that rack up debt are cars, I should totally have been an artist, and houses. They keep you indebted and in need of that regular safe income and they keep you in the rat race. Maybe what you should be doing is renting everything. We rent music now on Spotify or Apple Music. We're getting better at renting cars. And look, if you're thinking of buying a car, please stop right now. Just don't do it. It's a complete waste of money. And trust me, I've been down that road many times before and I've made many, many stupid decisions. In my defense, I was young and I was an idiot. We can even rent our Peloton exercise bikes now. So rent your car and rent your house. And there's a bit of an obsession with home ownership in the UK, but for most people, renting is the only viable option these days. And don't worry about it, as more often than not, it's actually the best option too. Renting gives you the ultimate flexibility. No repair costs, the boiler stops working one day, you just ring the landlord, he has to fix it. Your fridge packs up, same deal. You get a job in a different part of the country, great. Give notice and move, it's so easy. Your salary goes up, you can get a bigger flat or a bigger house. Your salary stagnates and then just stay where you are. Or even downsize. Renting allows you to breathe and grow with your career. Number three is stopping learning. Most people stop learning when they leave school or university. I strongly believe in a process of lifelong learning and skill development. Most employees I've worked with over the years haven't gone out of their way to learn a new skill since their early 20s. This leaves them vulnerable, only able to do their existing role at their existing company, and therefore with only one source of income. And if we've learned anything from the last few years, it's that relying on one source of income is extremely risky. The pandemic led to millions of people losing their jobs, and as the world of work becomes more and more global, more and more flexible, we're gonna see the same thing happening again. More companies cutting more jobs. People need to be flexible. By having one skill set, you're tied to one source of income. You're one incident away from not having any income in cash. By doing this, you're putting your whole livelihood in the hands of your employer. And this is a very risky position to be in. So, so to break free from the rat race, you need to be constantly developing your skill set. Whether this is to make yourself more valuable in the job market or just to give you the opportunity to earn money outside of your day job, it's a vital skill. Giving all of your financial power to your employer is a slippery slope and you really want to avoid that. So I just want to interrupt the video quickly to tell you about my email newsletter, which I've just launched. You can sign up in the link below. And if you do, I'll send you a free guide to the 10 best business videos here on YouTube, as well as my guide to the 10 best business books I've read over the last decade. It'd be great if you did, spread the word. Thanks very much. Right, let's get back to the video. Number four is short term thinking. The ultimate way to escape the rat race is to retire. And if you don't plan for that day, then it will never come. 
But to do that, you will need to delay the gratification of spending money today and stick that cash in your retirement fund or in a fund for retirement. Now, as humans, we're really bad at delayed gratification and saving for retirement is a perfect exercise in this. And it's a great example of the power of compounding. Now look, I'm sure you've heard of compounding and how it's really important and you may have watched some videos on it before, but it never ceases to amaze me how few people really get it. So let me give you a quick example. Right, if you saved £10 today and £10 tomorrow and every single day you stuck it in some sort of fund, we'll talk about where to stick it, maybe in another video, and you want to draw down on that pot 65 years old. Brilliant. Your fund will probably get some sort of return. The long-term return on equities is about 9%, so let's assume it's 9%. Now, if you started this process at 40 years old, you've got 25 years of saving 10 pounds a day. 10 pounds a day is not, not much, is it? It's a couple of uh, Starbucks lattes these days. If you do this, how much do you think you'll have as a pot at the age of 65, having stuck 10 pounds a day away, well, you will end up with a pot of £323,000. Great, not bad. But if we just move on, what if you'd started the saving plan when you were 20 years old and you saved till you were 65 years old? Now, that might be a bit harder, having £10 a day spare and doing it consistently, but you're doing it for 45 years rather than 25 years. So rather than a pot of 323,000 at 65, how much do you think you'll have this time? Well, unbelievably, you would have a pot of two million pounds. Now that is a decent nest egg. So look, you really do just need to start. Start today, save something, put it away, and just keep going every single day. I'll try and cover where to try and put that money in another video, but just start, don't delay. All right, number five is having what I call a carefree mindset. A carefree mindset being the sake, of course, and this is linked to number four. Now, while you're young and you don't have much money, you don't spend much time thinking about investing and saving and things like that, and that's kind of fine, right? But if you don't change that carefree mindset by the time you hit your 30s and 40s, it'll become harder and harder to change. I mean, habits become ingrained. If you continue to spend every penny you earn, like you did at 25, when you're 40 years old, well, you're not gonna be able to retire anytime soon. And look, I managed to retire at the age of 41. I'm now 51. Yet some people I know are still working 60 hour weeks, earning huge salaries and yet still living paycheck to paycheck. They haven't managed to adjust their mindset to get the most value out of their money. They're still trying to earn the money to spend rather than get the money invested and have the money work for them. I have three kids and I worry for them. This stuff isn't taught in schools, yet it's one of the most important skills in life. It's up to us to teach our children this stuff, but how can we teach them if we haven't learned the hard lessons ourselves? Now look, if you want to know any more about any of these topics, let me know in the comments below and I'll make another video just for you. But by ignoring this and not wanting to learn about it, you'll stay exactly where you are and you'll need to keep working for money rather than have your money work for you. Number six is a lack of creativity. You can tell I'm creative by my wonderful handwriting and my drawing. As a committed numbers man myself, I ignored creativity for much of my career and I really wish I hadn't. The ability to think differently and solve problems is hugely valuable and completely ignored by most people I've ever worked with. I mean, companies don't foster creativity or even frankly tend to encourage it, but it's a vital skill if you want to escape the rat race. Whether it's just encouraging cross-department collaboration, enhancing the customer experience, or merely cutting out wasted costs of the business you work for, if you're able to add value to your company and enhance your reputation by thinking creatively and coming up with solutions, then your value both to your existing company and in the job market is just gonna go up and as a result, your net worth will dramatically increase. Hopefully this video gave you some ideas or triggered some thoughts about your own habits. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, you may also enjoy another video that I have on why you should strive to think like an owner and not an employee. And I'll link this video over here. I hope to see you there soon. See you next time.